face that this world has forgotten. What's up, guys, and welcome yet again to another tier change video. Which is roller course is Garander, and of course, this is the tier changes that are in Smogon. So, if you want to read that yourself and follow out, of course, the usage, make sure to check out that link down below. And other than that, the tier changes here are going to be focused mainly on OU and UU. It has to be with that RU and NU are still in its beta alpha state, which means that their changes are a lot bigger and has not that really small adjustment as these tier are. So with that said, they're going to get their separate videos as, of course, their changes are released as the time is going on. And I say that it's a lot bigger. There are a lot more Pokemon moving in those environments at the moment because they're not stature tiers as, of course, Smoke and UU are at the moment. So with that said, there are a lot of changes here that are going to damage a few tiers for sure. Um, the Feramosa and Metagross ban definitely has affected Feramosa primarily because it all seems to be a bore um, working strat in OU. So with that said, let's see what, what has changed. So yeah, I'm just going to take the list as it is and just talk about a small bit about them as we go on. Um, you going from UU to OU, I don't believe that's that surprising. Mew is one of those Pokemons that it's not incredibly scary to be dealing with, even though it has a complete move pool, but the Will-O-Wisp uh, Stealth Rock set is still as viable as ever, it can be anything, and that is very, very, very helpful. And of course, decent recovery, but of course, Roots and Softball, decent, the best recovery, really. And um, yeah, overall, it's a very, very functional Pokemon overall, and very, very, one could say, unpredictable. So it makes sense it is an OU. Uh, it could definitely flex between OU and UU. It has a lot to do with its typing and not peaking in any stats that make it, well, not as often used as one would think. But as you guys see, OU means it's used a lot. It's, and in UU, probably is what it did really well. So OU being moved there is, it makes sense in so many regards, really. Uh, Mega Beat Reel from OU to UU. It's not that surprising. Um, it probably would stay in UU. It's still a very cool Pokemon OU. It still has a viability there. But. Just maybe not as bulky, and with of course the faster psychic types being able to pick it up, so of course Mega like Sam, Beedrill has a tough time. That to get of course priority really really make it hard to use Beedrill in the long run. But as, if it is on the rival in speeds here, it usually sweeps the whole team. So Beedrill being moved to UU has a lot to do with its unconventional forced out compatibility. But outside of that, it's still an excellent Pokemon, even in of course OU. Mega Sceptile uh, to UU. I don't think anyone is surprised by that. While I have been testing out something myself in Nature Power and Lele and stuff like that, as well as the take of the core terrain move and Bronis move pool, it, it still is a very, very niche thing to do, and quite honestly, um, Stalo Sceptile aren't necessarily that interesting, sadly, as a grass type. Tangrove does a better job, I mean, a bulky grass type. Offensive grass types aren't necessarily bad, but it should be said here that it doesn't work in this kind of environment because, well, it doesn't have necessarily the power. Uh, with that said, though, it still is a very interesting pony. Yu had not Mamoswine been moved to Yu which means another Ice Shard I could pick up. Sceptile is in there. Uh, Mamoswine being moved from OU to Yu uh, It was Yu even though it is super viable in OU in Generation 6. Um, I'm pretty sure it has the same type of environment. The Focus Sash set with the course Suicide Lead or Scarf set or even the Offensive Life Orb set. All of them are viable. Uh, and does really well, so um, not surprised they're seeing it move down. I don't believe it makes a Pokemon bad, but our Pokemon can perform similar roles, and um, I guess overall they meant that kind of that it fall into obscurity. Granted, though, is still as I said, they're super viable no matter what. Uh, Muck, the Alolan form be moved to OU to UU. I, I would say finally to that. Um, Alolan Muck, while being an excellent choice of dealing with Tapu Lele in OU. It is pretty much all it does. Uh, Landers it does threatening it out, and Lander C being so common means that Muck has a rough time. And um, yeah, it just it can't hold up as for a long time. Its move pool is really, 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 really struggling. Uh, it has best dual stabs, being of course Gung Shot and Knock Off. Uh, that, that's not going to go away, but lacking Lights of Ice Punch at the moment kind of makes it tough to use, and the ability doesn't necessarily pivot it enough to make it more well usable. That said, it has a strong niche. The Sulfus variant of Alolamak is very good, so it could very well move up again, but at the moment I do kind of understand why it was moved down, because the OU environment 
aren't necessarily the nicest to it, even though it does fairly well in it. Now, Clefable being moved from UU to OU is definitely something that makes sense. Clefable has been the proper response to um, the Flying Home Salamence for quite some time now. Uh, unaware, really, really make sure that they can't set up against it, and just overall, it does fairly well against even Mega Gyarados, who also, of course, is OU in a Dragon Dance, a superb Dragon Dance at that. So, Clefable is definitely one of those Pokemon that its role is a setup Stealth Rocks, it also has a role of just being able to deal with setup Pokemon and actually survive them. So, Unaware of the Fable is a clear response, of course, the playstyle that has been starting to develop in OU, which is a more bulkier playstyle with a bit more walls. And as I said before, not seeing Mega Metagross or Feramosa there really ensures that Cliff Fable can, well, be treated killed against a lot of Pokemon, which means it can recover against a lot of matchups. So not surprised there, but uh, it is unfortunate because then we'll come to Salamence, who's being moved from OU to UU, and this could be for that very, very reason alone. Um, Dunaware said against other Pokemon does kind of wall it out. Salamence still is really good. Um, it still is on par with the likes of Dragonite, due to its massive damage I've put with Seamus, but could be a bit of an unconventional move for time to time, and I think most people who play in OU kind of prefer their C move to be C Focus Blast or something really, really, really hard damage outputting just in general. And Salamence seem, could seem like a waste of, an, of a slot there. But trust me, Salamence is not going to stick in UU. It is too powerful for that. You can definitely see it move to BL as this moves on because I do believe that set, the Flyum set, is. As if it's used right, it could actually rival any team that has force to be dealing with. Clefable is a very, very small response in a tier with a very very few responses to it so um at, at that said uh Salamence, as i said here i think its viability is born to people who want to prefer to use other sea crystals over its fly mc variant but that said it doesn't me make it uh, any worse than the other pokemon probably is one of the strongest in this generation it got definitely a raise and a bulk up in this generation really curan black from bl to OU. Huh, that's as expected, <laughs> it, it is still in the same tier. It's not going to move to UU anyway, but it's more used more often now. Uh, Mega Steelix, OU's UU, probably going to go RU. I shouldn't say too much about it. Buswall, OU to UU. Now that's interesting. Buswall is a very, 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 very strong Pokemon overall. And I could definitely see it stick in UU, but if it does so, that kind of means that one fighting Pokemon in UU are out of commission. Conkeller is definitely dead if Buswall <laughs> takes over, uh, but Buswall is a Pokemon that I don't believe people are using right, or even if they do, it kind of make it hard to use it. Uh, it definitely needs a special defensive Pokemon to kind of make it thrive. It is a special, specially defensive, uh, well, waste of a Pokemon. I, that's, that's pretty much what I get at. It's a very, very, of course, physically in bond with heavy, heavy attack, heavy defense, heavy HP, and of course can roost. So, Buswell as a whole is a very, very scary Pokemon against offensive matchup, but against a special matchup, it definitely just kind of shy away. It actually have a decent speed to relatively 79, and could definitely capitalize on that if it forced to. So overall, it's not a bad Pokemon. I can definitely see it move up again. And depending, of course, on the upcoming game, it could also learn new moves. I really want to see Mew Tutor move and letting it gain Drain Punch. That would mean that Assault as variant of this thing would be... Yes, that would be so nice. Overall, Buzzwool, I don't believe it stays in UU, it shouldn't stay UU, it is a very strong move pool, and it could very well, as I say, that put Congeller out of commission for some time now. So, yeah, Buzzwool in UU is very interesting. Uh, Mega Pidgeot from OU to UU. This is actually kind of troublesome. Pidgeot is actually fairly good. Hurricane, Heatwave, that's pretty much all you need, and um, I don't believe its viability has gotten lower since previous generation. It still has a strong speed tier. Yes, Coco outspeeded, but there are a lot of things Coco's outspeeds. I don't believe it should be a factor for this dialogue. And overall, Mega Pidgeot, due to Roost, uh, could definitely Astronatus be one of those Pokemon that just spams flying stabs and just so much damage. While Tornadus is um, critically, I guess, somewhat better due to Regenerator and, of course, a broader move pool, Mega Pidgeot not missing a Hurricane is fairly scary. And. Um, I will definitely see Mega Pidgeot be moved to BL for because in UU it's just gonna be well scary 
but will they make a Pidgeot? Yay, that's gonna be a great time. <laughs> now, Crota moving from BL2 to UU, yeah, same thing as Kyurem there. The changes isn't that broad, but it's good to see that Cronon has finally got some usage in UU. Houndoom, the Mega Form OU to UU. I'm pretty sure it's gonna stay UU from here on out. As long as the Draught is not an OU exclusive move, Mega Houndoom can be very, very scary in UU. And uh, yeah, it's good speed here. The Mega Form boost really does boost that Pokemon itself, so I'm not really that surprised. And then we have, of course, Smurgle Mimo from NU to OU. Here's the thing with Smurgle, its viability is definitely either completely worthless or all out set up and stall. Not set up, but set up hazards and stall. And this could very well be it with Smurgle. Decent speeds here, focus that sets with Spore, Sticker Web, it does a whole lot for all you. And um, yeah, I said it here, due to Fermos and Mega Metros being gone, it could very well be very usable now. Before this, it could actually be U turned and back to Tangro. Which means that you only got sticker web up and never got to be able to spore properly. And this is definitely overall responsive believe, to the development in OU. Uh, its viability are on board with which Pokemon star in OU. So it could, like I said, either be the best Pokemon ever or absolute the worst. Uh, Keldeo from UU to OU. Not that surprising. Uh, Keldeo has been gotten a lot worse. I mean, the Skull nerf really just kinda affect Keldeo. Its the spec set is still as strong as ever. And it aren't necessarily that many Pokemon that does wallet that well. And uh, while it only has one possible good set, the Call Mine subset, while the revival cannot stall other water types anymore, which is unfortunate. Which before we do the burn damage could be very, very possible. So that is kind of bad. But Kelly overall is still a Pokemon that I believe does a lot of damage. If you're not prepared for it, it's going to punish you. It's going to punish you hard. So it makes sense for, for it to be an OU. But I could definitely see it being a Pokemon that moved back and forth because its viability are kind of shaky in uh, OU at the moment, but definitely knocks it out of the park in OU, or I mean in UU. Bishop, UU to OU. I don't think it'll stay OU. As long as Lele is active, it won't stay OU. It, it is very dependent on being able to sucker punch subs for stance. Uh, Iron Head does finish Lele without a doubt. But there are ways to deal with um, Bishop really well in OU. But its viability in UU is very, very high raised, and then it, I do believe that's mostly because it's actually not. There aren't really that many things that stops it, uh, which it makes it so good and so interesting. So I've been unfortunate to see it move up, but at the same time, it is because it's used that much. Uh, Pelipper, OU to UU. Drizzle is banned from other tiers in OU, so it makes sense. It is, of course, the Pelipper set that is just with the keen eye, I do believe. So, and, and Rain Dish, that, that's, that, that's great. Uh, we'll definitely see Pelipper in, um, in NU, possible PU, at the end of this generation, I'm sure. Zerkitry, OU to UU. I don't know. Um, Zerkitry is a Pokemon I do believe most people have a tough time using nowadays because of the niche speeds here. Uh, it isn't that scary to deal with, and uh, it, it should be but are easily walled out. I do believe people got tired of using it because they were walled out as it was commissioned their teams. The thing is here, it is an excellent Volt Switcher. It is a powerhouse in general, even though the speedster does not foretold too much about it. Its damage output is one of the best in the game, so I don't think it sticks in NU. I was going to say NU would be incredibly interesting, but UU, it's definitely going to stay OU, I do believe. At least get the BL. I'm pretty sure this Pokemon has a very, very high viability. And uh, even with the Baton Pass ban in general, there's still ways to boost circuitry, so of course Tailwind, so I, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's gonna get there. Uh, Nidoqueen, NU to UU. Same as uh, King really. Uh, it is very viable in other tiers, and uh, its defensive timing is one of the best in the game. So seeing it be moved so low as NU is very, very good to see in UU that it get a pretty decent coverage matchup and it does very well to it. I definitely believe that it's one of the best Pokemon to wall up certain Pokemon. So yeah, makes sense. It, it definitely belongs there. Odino from OU to UU. I really, really shouldn't say anything here. It is not a good... Po it, it's, it, it isn't really a good Pokemon. So um, it's gonna be, definitely be NU in the end of this. Uh, Gengar from UU to OU. The Scarf said Gengar is one of the scariest things to be dealing with in OU. It does hurt a lot of teams really, really well. And with Otapu so active as they are, and being weak, of course, to Sludge Wave, it makes sense that Gengar is here. And uh, yeah, 
it's uh, it might have gotten nerfed with of course getting curse body over levitate but its damage output are just as scary as ever uh, and last is actually Mega Swampert and OU to UU. Makes sense, but trust me, its strongest viability might very well be in OU, since, of course, I said the Drizzle is, of course, banned in other tiers. So, um, yeah, it, it could easily stay in UU, but it's, it's very viable in OU. Uh, but, and yeah, that's pretty much the tier changes as stated here. The NU and RG changes are going to be a lot bigger. They're going to have a separate video when they get released because there's going to be a lot of moving there. And it's just, yeah, it's going to be just as interesting as ever. A lot of bands is going to pass the next upcoming weeks, I'm sure. But yeah, what do you guys think of the tier changes? Anything that stands out for you? And yeah, don't forget to play a lot of UU now because with Bus Soul, Circuitry, Mega Houndoom, Mega Pit, there's going to be shit going down in that tier. It's going to be very interesting to see how long a few of these Pokemon will be around. So anyway, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching. And yeah, I'll see you, of course, next week with, of course, the next upcoming video being either in tiers or something else. Who knows? <laughs> anyway, guys, take care. Bye.